Ms. Curtis, you say this court date is extremely important to you. You're here to prove to your ex-fiance, Mr. Buckley, that he fathered your 22-month-old son, Xavier, because his denial has left you homeless and in need of help. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Buckley, you say Ms. Curtis is a cheater, and today the test will prove you are not the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Curtis, you say today's results mean everything. Explain. Well, Your Honor, I grew up with a father. I know how important it is to have a father in your life. And Mr. Buckley says it's very important for our child to grow up with a father. And so, with him being in and out of our lives and kicking us out of his... Out of his... Take your time. I know it's difficult. With him being in and out of our life and kicking us, not only me, but his son out of his apartment, we landed in a homeless shelter. I did not. And That's I was not, not true, known as Champ Press Curtis. I was known as Resident 1625, sleeping in a twin size bed with my son. That's not true. Sharing, I did not kick her out. Sharing everything with other residents in the homeless shelter. You say he kicked you out, Miss Curtis? He went to his landlord, and his landlord sent me an eviction notice. I had just had surgery. Is that true, Mr. That, Buckley? Yes, that is true, Your Honor, but I, I allowed her to live in my apartment at that time. I was being nice to her. She got mad at me because I was with someone else. I didn't want a relationship with her. She told me she was going to make my life a living hell while living in my apartment, and that's why I called my landlord. I was being nice to Mrs. Curtis. At this point, did you believe her son, Xavier, was your biological child? No, Your Honor. I... No, Your Honor. Miss Curtis, in your mind, while you're living with Mr. Buckley, did you think he had accepted that Xavier was his biological child? Yes. He said he had a little doubt in his mind, but that when he looked at Xavier, that was his son. That was his child, that he loved our child. He gave him his last name. Your Honor, I don't think I can have kids for, for multiple reasons. It only takes one uh, fast one. <clears throat> one. So you don't believe you can have children? No, Your Honor. Why? Your Honor, um, I was in a relationship before and we tried to conceive a child. We went to fertility specialists and we were on uh, medicine and kept up with ovulation dates and the whole nine. And it didn't happen. As, as soon as we separated, she ended up having two other children. And that's, that happened in not only that relationship, but with the following relationship that I was in. Um, I just... So you've never believed you could have children? No, Your Honor. So what happens when Miss Curtis tells you, I'm pregnant? Told her, congratulations. Whose is it? No, you didn't. That's pretty much what I said. No, you said you told every other girl you were in a relationship with, congratulations, who's the father? But I was different. That you were willing to step up and be his father. I which you haven't done. I haven't done that because of you. Because of me? Yes. It's just a drive away. You got a car. You, you can drive. You were living in my apartment. I allowed you to live in my apartment. You and left still because didn't I didn't want to be with you. No, I didn't leave because I didn't want to be with you. Yes. Every no. time I came over there, it was pure... Heck. We lived I, together. I allowed you to. You had your own apartment. Yes. But every time I went home, you asked us to come back over. Yes. Because you I wanted have... to spend time with your son, and I wasn't standing between that. But you are now. No, I'm not standing between that, but I'm not going to let you mess with my head. You can leave me out of the equation and see your son. That's your child. I... Don't play with me. Your, your Honor, I have multiple reasons to have doubt about Xavier being my child. This is not about your relationship. It really is about Xavier, this child, and his paternity. That's it. When she told you she was pregnant, did you believe that there maybe was a miracle and you did father this child? Not at first, Your Honor, no. What happened? Um, as the months continued to go along, um, I continued to get older and I, I wanted a child. I, I accepted Xavier as my child even though I don't think I can have kids. Your Joey, Honor. I know when I conceived. I know who I was with when I conceived. 
I, I know who you were with, too, and it wasn't just me. It, so, staying at your house and spending Christmas with you? Who was I having sex with? Your brothers? Your I uncle? Don't know. What happened during the conception period? It was during the holidays? Yes, it was Christmas. She told me. I was me supposed she... to go home for Christmas, and I couldn't afford to go home. So, he volunteered for me to spend Christmas with him and his family. Your Honor, she also told me she had sex with someone while she was pregnant. So why... While I was pregnant is different than when I conceived. Before the, he was conceived, you were with other people. No, I wasn't. Yes, I sir. worked eight, nine hours a day. And then I went over to your apartment. That means you got plenty of other hours left. <laughs> From leaving work at 4.30 and being at your house by 5? When do I have time between packing my clothes and getting a ride over there to have sex with somebody else? Because I'm not a five-minute quickie. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So take me to the day you gave birth, Ms. Curtis. I was in labor for 13 and a half hours. Mr. Buckley was with me for the whole 13 and a half hours. I have pictures of him at the hospital. I'd like to see those. I end up having to have an emergency C-section because little Xavier's oxygen level dropped and he was in distress. And they took me in for an emergency C-section and my mom came with me. And when I woke up and they wheeled me by the nursery to see him, Mr. Buckley was standing there with tears running down his face. That was the moment that I fell in love with Mr. Buckley. He was standing, he'd been standing there since he came into the nursery until I got rolled, rolled to my room about 2.30. That's a couple hours, him standing there just looking at our beautiful son. Something that we made together, something that I never thought was possible. Something that and I so, don't think is possible, Your Honor. But in this photo, it doesn't look like... I see tears in your eyes, Mr. Buckley. What do you feel when you look at that picture? It's, it's impossible to, to describe. Uh, there's, there's no way to put it into words. Um, the, the, I just don't... Like, like I said, I don't think I can have kids. I've been there, I tried, and... When you look at that picture, it doesn't look like you don't believe. It doesn't look like you aren't there. It looks like you're in the moment and you're looking at your new baby. What my, were you feeling in the my, moment? My heart and my mind are at a constant battle. Um, my heart wants him to be, but my mind knows better. What you see right there is my heart. If your mind knew better, why did you sign the birth certificate? Because of my heart. <sighs> why did you sign the acknowledgement of paternity? You want to talk about you have doubts that you couldn't have kids? I went through chemo and radiation. They told me all my eggs were fried, that I would never be a mother. But I'm a mother to a beautiful little boy. Your Honor, Miss Curtis and I were not monogamous at the time. Um, you weren't. You can't say she, what I she, wasn't. She is extremely promiscuous. Um, my, my witness here can tell you a little bit about that later, but... Um, so you're saying, sir, in addition to your doubt as it relates to your own medical challenges and not believing and being told you would not be able to father children, you also believe that Miss Curtis was very promiscuous at the time? Correct, Your Honor. I'd like to hear from your witness. Please stand, ma'am. Hello. I'd like to hear from your witness. Please stand, ma'am. Hello. Hello. State your name for the court. Anika Bunch. Ms. Bunch, you are Mr. Buckley's... Friend. All right. And what information do you have concerning um, Xavier's paternity? Your Honor, I have a lot of information. I actually brought a sketch with me. I would like to see it. The exhibit here. Please step to it. This right here, Your Honor, this is my house, my back door. And this is Mrs. Curtis' front door. And as you this can see, true. I can see everything. We were friends. We've been friends. I, I told her, I see you. When, she, when we found out she was pregnant, she had a boyfriend. He passed away. They were together. And mind you, there were other men. So what you're saying is from your back door... That's not true, Your Honor. 
I lived at the top of a hill. She lived at the bottom. So this is, is my history. this is my house and this is hers. And I lived on this end. Her and back she lived door on this end. is right here. There's a I straight line of everything. sight from her back door to her everything. front door. She knows and she then came and confided in me and told me about the other guys. What around, exactly could you see from your door to I can hers? I see men coming out of this door. And her How? When I don't there, even use that door. And her running up to the Africans up at, at the other apartments up top. The Africans I they was were speaking, her... teaching English to. She... Because he came from Africa and That's didn't a lie. speak English. That is a lie. He didn't speak English. He spoke English. English to me. <laughs> Thank you so much for your testimony, ma'am. So, Ms. Curtis, you are denying Ms. Bunch's accusations. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. There was other men coming in and out of my house, but I wasn't sleeping with those other men. And there was no old boyfriend that was still lingering around? We had stopped messing around before I even met Mr. Buckley. That's and he true, passed away. She, that's not true, Your Honor. I was, I was told stories about her being with him while we were together. She would go back to her apartment and mess around. But at the time Xavier was conceived, we were not in a relationship. Were you in a relationship at the time? Xavier was conceived, Miss Curtis. No, Your Honor. You were. I was not. Me and Mr. Buckley were just hanging out and kicking it and having sex. Casual sex. So you're on the birth certificate, Mr. Buckley. And I have proof that too. I'd like to see that. Are you currently paying child support? Um, I'm on no, child support. No, he quit support. his job, so uh, he wouldn't have to. I'm working right now. I'm missing out on work right started. now. I just started back. All right, so here on the birth certificate, Father's name, Xavier Buckley. Yes, Your Honor. That's you. Correct. You signed it voluntarily. Yes, I... Yes, Your Honor. And there... Is there a child support order? Yes, Your Honor. There is? Yes. How much per week are you obligated to pay? Um, I'm not exactly sure. He uh, was supposed to pay $216 a month, and then when he quit his job, they dropped it down to $80 a month. I do everything on my own. Are you current on your child support, sir? No, oh, he's $3,000 behind. Your Honor, I just got my first child support statement in the mail, so it's not like I've been neglecting it. Like I said, she was living in my apartment. No, because you got child support um, papers when I was living there. You, you checked the mail. I wasn't there. You were there because you asked me to call and have you taken off child support because you were willing to be with me. No, because, because you were, we living were living in my together. apartment. I wasn't living there. Exactly. So why would I take you off child support? Because you, ain't you were doing living nothing. in my apartment. And you're still not providing for your child. Mr. Buckley, if you said you had doubts, you say it's your heart that drove you to sign the birth certificate even though your mind had doubts. Did you understand that because you signed that birth certificate, you would be legally obligated to provide support for this child? Yes, Your Honor. My family made me well aware of that. And my entire family begged me not to sign it. I, like I said, I did it out of my heart. Because even today, if the results prove that you are not Xavier's biological father, you are still deemed to be his legal father. There is no guarantee that the court in your home state will remove you from that birth certificate or relieve you of that legal obligation. Do you understand? I, I do now, Your Honor. That's an obligation that extends minimally 18 years. I could care less if my son grew up with this man in his life. I've been doing this by myself for almost two years. That's why I, I allowed her to move into my apartment against my landlord's wishes. And then made it so unbearably uncomfortable. I was never there. You come in on nights after being out kicking it, want to sleep in the bed with I us. I would sleep on the wanna... couch. You would get mad no, at me because no, I would try and sleep no, on the couch. No, You would come and crawl in bed. That's a, that's a lie, Your Honor. It is obvious you all have so many unresolved issues. I don't even know, are you broken up? It sounds like you're still together. No, we're not together. No, Your Honor. You act like it. This is about Xavier. Well, that's why we're here. This court exists because we want to protect Xavier. We want him to know who his biological father is, and we want to figure out how we can help you all move forward. I have the results for you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Curtis versus Buckley, when it comes to 22-month-old Xavier Buckley, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Buckley, you are not his father.
Oh, baby. Go down. I'm very sorry. Miss Curtis. I wasn't with anybody else. Obviously you were with someone else. Jesus, Lord. <laughs> Xavier was born 40 weeks after conception. December 24th to September 24th is 40 weeks. I need you to stop this right now, babe. He's not the father. I don't know what you're wrestling with, sweetheart, but you are a ball of nerves, anger. You just wound up. Your Honor, I'm still willing to be in Xavier's life. The way he looks at me, the way he runs up to me, now all the drama and extracurricular stuff can be cut short. I'm still willing to be in his life. Ms. Miller, you've summoned the defendant, Mr. White, to court to prove to him that he is not your biological father, even though he has believed he's your father your entire life. Yes, Your Honor. The man you now say is your father is waiting in the hallway and will join us in court in a moment. Uh, Mr. White, it was only two weeks ago that your daughter revealed to you that you may not be her father. You are 100% certain that you fathered Ms. Miller and plan to prove it in court today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Miller, how is it that two different men are in court believing that they're your father? Um, I was raised um, around both men, but mainly around, around Mr. Wright. Um, I spent mo most time with Mr. Wright. I used to go over to his house um, twice out the month, and I hardly spent any time with Mr. Wright. So up until the age of me being a teenager, I called both of them dad. And once I found out which um, was the day where my mom and my grandmother was in the bedroom, and I said I wanted to go to my dad's house, um, Mr. Wright. So my mom, um, her back was turned to me and she said, I don't know who your dad is. And that she believed more so that Mr. Wright is than Mr. White is. And um, I've known this since I was a teenager. So at this point I feel selfish because I continue to call both Mr. Wright and Mr. White my dad. And neither of them knew of each other until two weeks neither ago. Neither men knew of the other one. So Ms. Miller, tell me exactly what happened two weeks ago. Um, well, like I said before, I felt selfish because I didn't tell either of them, but I had to build up the nerve to actually call them, and I, um, I addressed both of them, hey, Dad, um, and I took a deep breath, and I was like, I want you to prove that you're my dad, and um, Mr. White got quiet, and I asked him again, and, you know, I was like, you know, I really want to know because I don't know, and then I said, my mom told me that she doesn't really know who my father is. So pretty much, you've been living a lie yes. for 30 years. Yes. And you were told as a child mm -hmm. you had two fathers. Yes, Your Honor. It felt normal to me to call, to, to call both Mr. Wright and Mr. White my dad. It felt well, normal. listen, we have lots of blended families yeah. where there's a stepfather, there's a, you know, father. People call more than one person dad, but what it sounds like, which is so confusing mm -hmm. for a child is you were told that you had two yes. biological fathers. Yes, Your Honor. Which we know is Is impossible. that possible, right. Mr. White, Ms. Miller's 30 years old. You weren't aware all of these years? Nope. That she was calling another man dad as well? Nope, I don't even know who he is. So the entire relationship, your, this is your, your little girl. This is your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. When you got this call two weeks ago, what? What did you feel like? When I got that phone call, I was, I was wondering, where would you get this from out of 30 years? If she can find out that I'm not her father out of 30 years, somebody could have told me. Yeah. And I was with her mother every night. When she was born, I was with her mother eight years after she was born. So I'm trying to figure out how did he get in the middle? And you still have no real information I still don't believe. You've it. never seen this other man. I, I know not as I know of I am. So you lived as a family this whole time. Right. Exactly. Until she was eight years together. old. I didn't know that. My memory is kind of guarded, but um, I don't remember actually living 
And I probably did because my heart just breaks for you because I see you still trying to make sense yeah. of this. And I'm wondering as a child, how, how is it that they were kept apart? How did, how did you manage that? I mean, you had things at school, did you not? No, and well. How, how did that happen that they weren't both there? I think he probably wasn't invited to anything because she was dating him or he wasn't, you know, and vice versa. I think that she kept them apart which kept me knowing that, okay, I go over here, I don't mention this dad. I go over there, I don't mention And you this knew dad. that as and, a child? Yes. Was that explained to you point blank, out in the open, this is how we do it? Or was it unwritten, it, unsaid, and you just knew? It was unwritten. It's like a habit you pick up. Like once you see, your, um, I saw my mom talking to one, it was, you were forbidden to say the other's name. So what I did as a child was just picked up on what I saw. I'm, I'm baffled, but what would happen on Father's Day? Your mother would just have you call both men? Um, well, on Father's Day, I, I, I never really had Mr. White's number like that. I didn't call him all the time, and he never had my number. I do want to apologize to Mr. White because I knew exactly where he was. But for so long, I just kept telling myself, you know, Mr. Mr. Wright is my father, and I hid from it. I hid from it. So what you did, consciously or unconsciously, is you put a wall up yes. between you and Mr. White. Yes. Once you began to truly feel that Mr. Wright was your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. I think it's time we meet this other gentleman. Will you please escort him into the courtroom? Thank you for joining us, Mr. Wright. How do you feel hearing this right now? I'm stunned. Have you ever seen or met Mr. White? No, no ma'am. No, young. You do realize at this point, Mr. Wright, that Mr. White believed over the last 30 years that he is Ms. Miller's biological father. I'm her father. I've been in her life for 30 years. See, that's the thing. I feel like I've been living a double life because I don't even have, like, social sites now. Because if I do, like, family barbecues, which I spend a lot of time with Mr. Wright's side of the family, from barbecues to parties, birthdays, and I don't do that with Mr. White. For the sole purpose of other family members on Mr. White's side, you know, I don't want them to run back and tell him, like, who is this man? Miranda's calling her dad or to raise a lot of drama. So I just completely just close all social sites. I don't do any of that for that purpose. So you're living a double life. It's almost as if you're in hiding. Yeah. And is it because you don't want to hurt either side? My, my thing is that I love them both. So I'm afraid of the outcome. I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody. And, I, and I, I keep telling myself, it's not your fault, it's not your fault. But I feel like I'm, I am partially the blame because once I was old enough to say, okay, um, Mr. White, there's a possibility you're not my dad or I could have came to Mr. Wright, which I see him often and told him that you probably, you're not my dad or you probably, it's a possibility there's another man. I haven't, I haven't done any of that because I'm just scared, I guess. Just scared of the truth because like I said before, I'm closer to his side of the family. These people are your family. Yeah. And so I understand how you feel, and you are right. It's not your fault. Now, Mr. <laughs> Wright, I've asked Mr. White the same thing, but I want to know from you, when you got that call two weeks ago, what did you think? I was shocked. I was very shocked. And you had no idea, N none. No young, no young. 30 years. 30 years. This is your daughter. Yeah, this is my daughter. So tell me about the relationship you had with her growing up. Well, um, her grandmother called me, told me, you got a daughter. So when I got to the house, her grandmother brought her down the steps. I grabbed her and held her. And she held me back tight ever since then. That's my baby. That's my baby. Now, Mr. White, you didn't know she had a relationship with Mr. Wright. 
No, I didn't, Your Honor. And you say you were there through the pregnancy. Yes, Your Honor, I was. Neither one of them were on my birth certificate. And I asked Mr. White. Mr. White said that he thought it was a possibility that I wasn't his child. No, I didn't say that. Well, maybe I heard wrong. No, I didn't say that. You always been my child. All 30 years. And I'll never say that. But now she's in court today to prove you are not her biological father. Because it's true, you believe Mr. Wright is your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. I look so much like his entire family. From, from my grandmother to my auntie, um, his entire family is just like me. The freckles, everything. We just look so much like the nose. And I mean, I just believe in me being around him so much. She's my daughter. She looked just like, she looked just like my mom. She looked just like my mom. What is that evidence you're presenting to me, sir? This is a photo of Ms. Miller... Yes, ma'am. ...and your mother. Yes, Your Honor. You see the resemblance, too, Ms. Yes, Miller. Yes, Your Honor, you everything. I, I see it all. When you look at that, Mr. White, do you see a resemblance? Mm. Yeah, I do. But you also submitted another photo to the court because you said you also feel like you look like Mr. White. Yeah. Oh, wow, I've never seen it side by side like that. And you see a resemblance there as well? Yes, Your Honor. Do you see a resemblance, Mr. Wright, of this photo of Ms. Miller and Mr. White? Yes, the nose. This is truly remarkable. Now, we talk a lot in this courtroom about, well, don't go on resemblance. But that was remarkable to look at a right, side by what, side. I never, I never saw me and Of Mr. you White, yeah. and also of his mother. Do you feel like you're here trying to prove that Mr. Wright is your biological father because you do have a closer connection with his family? I, I think I'm here now to seek my truth because I feel once I do find out the truth, I don't need their help. I will move forward and push to build a relationship with whomever it, turn, it turns out to be. I first commend you for having the strength 30 years old, just to come stand here and seek your truth. Mm -hmm. I have to say, though, this... This is one of the most amazing cases we've ever seen in this courtroom. <sighs> I'm overwhelmed. I can only imagine what that must feel like for you. God, my heart is racing. I'm so nervous because now... That's why I said I'm here to seek my truth, because once seeing both of those pictures, I'm like, wow, I, I don't even know, like... In my heart anymore. When my heart, I feel like Mr. Wright is my dad. But like my gut, my mind, everything is just like it's in the air. I think we've waited long enough and it's time for the result. You agree? <laughs> Before I read these, I have to ask both gentlemen. And I want to thank you too for being so respectful to one another today and to Ms. Miller. This is um, a very difficult and emotional situation, and I see how much you both love her and the way you've conducted yourself today in this courtroom. I've really appreciated this. Um, I have to ask you, though, are you prepared, Mr. White, for a negative result? If it's determined you are not her biological father, have you prepared your mind and your heart for that? Yes, Your Honor. If it makes her happy, I'm happy. How about you, Mr. Wright? Have you prepared yourself for a negative result? Do you believe there's any possibility you could not be her biological father? And if so... That's my baby. Well, let's get to the results. They were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. And they read as follows. In the case of Miller, Wright versus White, when it comes to whether Mr. Wright or Mr. White is the biological father of 30-year-old Miranda Miller. 
It has been determined by this court. Ms. Miller's biological father is Mr. White. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So right. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel so bad for you. I'm sorry. I'm so God. Oh, God. Mr. Wright, I'm so sorry. I know that was not the news oh, wow. you wanted or expected. Oh, my God. Why? Wow. Oh, I do need to sit down. Mr. Wright, are you okay? Can you just breathe? No. <clears throat> 30 years. That's my baby. No matter what, she's still my baby. Oh, my God. She's still my daughter. I'm sorry. You're welcome. You if you'd like to go down and sit, you may. See, I'm... You came here today, Ms. Miller, because you needed the truth. But let's make one thing clear. That in no way changes okay. the love you have for Mr. Wright, okay. his family, the connection you have. This double life, this, this needed to end today. Ms. Sanchez, you say today's DNA results mean everything. You are spiritually married to the defendant, but claim his denial that he fathered your eight-month-old son has stopped him from legally marrying you. You need paternity proof to save this relationship. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Terman, you doubt you are Jordan's father and say your marriage is not a real legal marriage, and it won't be unless Ms. Sanchez stops lying to you. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Sanchez, why is today's result so important to you? It's important to me to save my marriage with my husband because this has gone on for two years of accusations and lies and the fact that he doesn't trust me. It's very hurtful and it, it means a lot to me today that we prove once and for all that he's the father of my son and put it all to bed after this. Why are you here, Mr. Terman? Uh, I'm here because, like she said, we got married, but I just, I couldn't go through with it because there's too many trust issues. And I feel like if you don't have trust, you can't go forward with the relationship, and I don't believe he's mine. So I want to find out. So this paternity question literally has your marriage, your legal marriage, on hold. Mm -hmm. yes. You refuse to move forward, and you're basically living in not just legal limbo, but also love limbo. Yes, and I think it's so important for a child to have both parents to grow up in a functional household. Mr. Terman, can you please tell the court, how did you meet Miss Sanchez? Uh, well, we met on Tinder. And I'm swiping, I'm swiping, and I came across her profile, and I super liked. So super like is when it goes directly to them so they know somebody likes you. And so she liked me back, we connected. We were supposed to hang out the first night, and she declined because she was with somebody else she met from Tinder. So the second night is when we actually hung out. She came over, um, we had some drinks, one thing led to another, and we had sex the first night. The first night you met? Yes, it was the first night. That's definitely a super swipe, <laughs> super like, whatever you called it. <laughs> okay, so you meet and you have sex the first night? Yes, ma'am. Unprotected? 
Yes. Miss Sanchez, I have to ask you, because he said you went on a date before, were you dating multiple men at the time? No. But when you met Mr. Terman, he was just what? So nice, yeah. handsome, you just decided you're going to have sex with him on the first night? All of the above, plus all the added um, alcohol and, <laughs> you know. That'll do it. Blame it on the alcohol. All right, so, Mr. Terman, did you believe after you had the first date and first <clears throat> sexual encounter with Ms. Sanchez that you all were exclusive? So, I felt that we were exclusive, but me and her had two different ideas of what talking is. To me, talking is... What? No, what does talking even mean? I talk to a lot of people. <laughs> what does that mean? That means nothing to me. We had no... No ground See, rules. That's, that's where a lot of the trust issues came in because I'm thinking one way, she's thinking another way. And I showed my friends pictures of her because I'm hype. I'm like, she beautiful, she matched with me, we met. And so I show them pictures and they send me a video like, yo, isn't this the girl you're talking to? <laughs> she's at a bar giving somebody else her number, it looks like. No. Nope. So it just started to form like issues nope. with trust. If she slept with me the first night that we met, then what would. What would... I mean, she probably could have slept with him the first night. Did you bring it up? Did you say, oh, I saw you give your information to this guy? Yeah, I did. And she kept the same attitude, like... Because how, how could I know what's wrong if we're just talking? Oh. Oh. I didn't feel guilty about that. Well, she's being honest. You were on direct dial and she was on the party line. Right. <laughs> Then there was a... There's another situation where I'm out with my friends and another guy who I've just seen around, I don't really know him personally, he stops me and he's like, hey, man, are you talking to Gabby? And he goes, you should be careful, man. I heard she messes with a lot of dudes. And I'm like... What? That's strange to me because that's how we met. We did mess around on Tinder. So that looks like... That looks like true information for him to randomly come up to me and tell me that. There were people that I was swiping through, matching with, and having conversations oh. with. So, how many conversations did you have open when you were with Mr. Turbo? Exactly. <laughs> we were just talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't... So, I'm right. You was on the party line and you had stopped swiping. Yes. And you was on automatic swipe. <laughs> Did you ever get any physical evidence that Ms. Sanchez was with someone else? Yeah, Sharon, I did. So, we went to the grocery store. We went to the grocery store and, um, we came back. So, I go to the trunk to get the groceries or whatever, and I find men's boxers oh! in the trunk. <laughs> now, I know for sure these aren't mine. I'm like, whose are these? These are not mine. What? So... Jerome, I, that's, I, I that's don't even know if I want to see happened. that evidence, though. <laughs> you want to go get it? They wash it? <laughs> yeah, I'll get it. Oh! You know I'm a germaphobe. Put it on this pen. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> Men's boxers. <laughs> Miss Sanchez. How did these men's boxer shorts get in your trunk? Okay, because I had done laundry at my family member's house. I have male family members, and that's a lie because there was more than just one thing of boxers. There was socks in there. There was all kinds of random stuff in there. I didn't see there. it. I'm sure you didn't. Oh. But a whole pair of men's boxer shorts is the one thing in your trunk out of all the laundry? That's an unfortunate coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> But gotcha. that's exactly what happened. That's it. That's it. And then after all this, you find out you're pregnant. Not exactly that way. He took me to Vegas for my birthday. And on that trip is when we had sex again, unprotected. And I know for a fact that I conceived October 20th. That's my birthday. So that... In Vegas. Mm-hmm. On October 20. Mm-hmm. But I have... I have proof that October 15th, a friend of mine, Mr. Stevenson, seen her at a bar talking to somebody else. 
And I what? have this statement right here. Let me see that evidence, Jerome. And you believe that Jordan could have been conceived on this night. Absolutely, Your Honor. This statement <laughs> says, so my friend Joel, back around October, showed me a girl he met and was starting to talk to on Tinder back when I was in California. But like mid-October, I was at a bar club and I saw her there talking to another guy, feeling on him. <laughs> I recorded it and sent him the snap of her giving her number to him and that's the statement from your friend. Yes, Your Honor. And that date was what? October 15th, and I believe that could have been the conception date. It looks bad. It looks bad. I get that. I understand that. Well, the only way to figure that out, let me grab my conception calculator and see what's going on here. <laughs> when is Jordan's birthday? His birthday is July 9th. Birthday, July 9th. 2018, mm -hmm. and then I'll press calculate. Sex likely between October 15th and October 21st, 2017. Exactly, the date my friend seen her at the bar wow. talking to the guy. So I think it's possible that she went home with that guy and like me and her had sex on the first night, could have been the same situation. I never slept with that person, never. So how is this doubt eating away at you. Jordan is eight months old. Beautiful baby. You're supposed to be happy and buying little toys and tickling feet. And how is this doubt eating away at you? I mean, it... I'm doing all those things, like you said, but a lot of the arguments that we have come from this situation. So it just causes a lot of fights between us <laughs> and it causes us not to be able to move forward with our relationship. And then there was another situation where... I was going to go out with my friend. She didn't want me to. I went out anyways. The next day, we had a talk, and she was upset, and she was like, well, you don't need to come to the hospital because he's not yours. We're good. What? Yeah, she's like, we're good. We don't need you. Don't come to the hospital. He's not yours. Miss Sanchez, after all that, you ring that bell? I know the things that get under his skin and in those moments of tension and I'm trying to hurt him, I'm trying to upset him, I know exactly what to say that's gonna upset him and I knew that would be the number one thing. That's not right, nor was it true, but I, that's what I said. But, Miss Sanchez, I mean, come on now. You've stood here and testified how desperately you want your child to have a life mm -hmm. you didn't have. Mm -hmm. Now, you got this man getting videos of you, you admittedly are still on Tinder, having open conversation with folks and meeting folks because you didn't think you were exclusive. You got boxers in your trunk, and now you admittedly say you aren't the father, this child isn't yours? How do you think you could overcome all of that doubt? You really just put the needle on the haystack with that. Mm-hmm. Since then, you know, I've been consistent. He signed the birth certificate. He was there through the pregnancy. Never again did I mention anything like that because that was a mistake and because that's not true, so... Well, you meant to say it because you meant to hurt him. I mean, I'm just thinking as a woman who could think of ways that you could hurt someone you're dating, you could hurt him a lot of other ways mm -hmm. with a lot of other words then the baby isn't yours. Yeah. So, Mr. Terman, have you prepared yourself? Have you really prepared yourself either way? This is a beautiful baby. Eight months, you say you're involved, you're on the birth certificate. With all of this, you still marched your little self in there and signed that birth certificate. I did. Um, you know, I want a family. I want that whole lifestyle. I love her. But if he's not mine, I just don't see myself moving forward, not having that trust in our situation. But see, what I don't understand is you got all these principles, but yet you didn't understand that you have no business signing a birth certificate if you're not gonna marry the girl and you're not gonna have, be a family if it's not your biological child. Because now he's your legal... You're the legal father. <laughs> you're on the birth certificate. So you might not have the family, but you're gonna have the financial obligation of that child support. <laughs> I think I've heard enough testimony. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. <laughs>
Ms. Sanchez, you look nervous. No, I'm excited. Ms. Sanchez, I have to say, I've heard a lot of these cases, and most times when a young woman is standing here and has this many coincidences, there's something that she hasn't told the court, mm -hmm. and there's something she hasn't also told her partner. Before I open these results, is there something you just want to come clean about, lay on the line, and just admit to so that it's done and you can start to try to establish the trust Mr. Terman says is a prerequisite to the marriage? Is there anything you'd like to say? No, ma'am. Okay. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Terman versus Sanchez, when it comes to nine-month-old Jordan Terman, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Terman, you are the father. <laughs> You are the father. That is your son. That's amazing. That's, that's important to me because, like I said, our love is amazing. What we've grown to become is nothing like we started. So this is just allowing us to keep moving forward.